Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, I'd like to thank the honourable member for the question. Uh, sir, in the, in the budget uh, that has recently been approved by Parliament, we had allocated $60 million uh, to shield the most vulnerable Fijians from the rapid price increases, including certain commodities, for example, fuel, sir. Uh, of course, this has been precipitated by the fact that we had a one, one in a hundred year event, uh, COVID-19 affected supply chains, etc. But that got exacerbated uh, by the Russia-Ukraine war. And so again, there's been a shortage of, for example, access to fuel, wheat, etc. To help cushion the impact of inflation, uh, inflation in certain countries like USA is about 8 to 9 percent, UK is similar rates of inflation, uh, Fiji is now seeing an inflation rate of about 5 percent, and various other trading partners have got higher inflation rates. So I think the only one that's got the lowest inflation rate uh, until a few months ago was, was Japan. So as a result of uh, helping cushion the impact of inflation, Government will be paying a lump sum payment of $180 to families for six months. Uh, this includes uh, uh, tertiary students, uh, social welfare recipients, those who receive aftercare fund, uh, government pensioners, uh, and of course uh, general uh, children that are you know, also below the age of school, uh, school going age, and all students in, in school. So, just uh, in respect of the uh, uh, pensioners, aftercare, and social welfare recipients, uh, they will receive a direct additional top of $100 to their accounts on 31 August uh, 2022, which is actually tomorrow, sir. Uh, this payment date is being aligned to the next pension payment date and no application is required from this group of beneficiaries. Similarly, all social welfare recipients will also receive a direct additional top up of $180 to their accounts on 5th of September, uh, aligned to the next welfare payment, uh, uh, payment date. To make it easy for them, social welfare recipients are not required to submit any kind of application, as with those with aftercare and government pensioners, because we already have the details. Uh, sir, approximately $18 million will be paid out to more than 90,000 social welfare recipients and around 8,000 government pensioners and aftercare recipients, sir. So all registered tertiary students who are already under tertiary education loan scheme or TELS and topper scholarship will be paid a lump sum of $180, again on the 5th of September, sir. The TELS uh, loan uh, service uh, uh, will facilitate the payment on behalf of the Ministry of Economy. As such, more than 13,000 TELS and TOPPERS recipients will be assisted with approximately $2.4 million and they get paid that next week. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, they don't need to apply because we already have the details. The tertiary institutions covered by TSLS include the University of the South Pacific, Fiji National University, University of Fiji, Corpus Christi Teachers College, Fulton College, Sangam Institute, Pacific Flying School and Advanced Aviation Training. So those uh, students who are in tertiary studies and who are currently not on the TELS program or on toppers, uh, private students, can also apply online through the online inflation mitigation application system. These students will be required to provide the personal details, mobile numbers and evidence of active enrollment registration in one of the universities to be eligible. The payment to them will be made through M-Pesa or MyCash depending on the mobile phone number. Sir, we have already received a total of 5,839 applications from tertiary students, on, uh, from such tertiary students who are not on TELS or TOPPERS on the online platform as of 29 August uh, 2022. All applications received as of now are currently at the verification stage. We have to verify that, look at the TIN number, and indeed verify whether they indeed uh, fall within this category of a household of less than $50,000. And of course, any other details that may be applicable, um, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, as announced in the budget also, uh, government will provide support on a per-child basis for families who earn less than $50,000 in combined annual household income. Uh, this is applicable to them. In total, parents will receive $100 per child over a six-month period. Uh, families with children near 13 or below who currently receive subsidized transportation assistance, a total of 91,000 students, can fi uh, fill out a simple manual form that calls for, uh, calls for MyCash and M-Pesa account details to receive assistance. As these students already qualify for transportation assistance, there is no need for additional income verification by the parents or indeed by the school. Mr. Speaker, sir, parents can also apply online through the Inflation Mitigation Application System, which is now open for applications and will close on 30th September 2022. Manual forms are also available at all schools since 15 August 2022 and can be filled out and submitted to the children's uh, school or to the child's school. In the interest of time, a deployment of funds, families are strongly encouraged to apply online for assistance. Mr. Speaker, sir, payments for these will begin on 1st of September 2022. 
Subsequent payments for later applications will be made out fortnightly basis, uh, starting on 15 September 2022 after 1st of September, followed by 30 September, 14 October, and 31 October. Mr. Speaker, so those families earning below $50,000 but whose children do not currently receive transportation assistance can also apply for inflation mitigation assistance through the Ministry of Education through the same manual application form at schools or indeed apply online. The manual application form will get together details of parents and obtain phone numbers for payment. Students will need to get the form filled in by the parents and teachers and heads of schools will be responsible to upload the details of the form on, the, on FEMIS. It is important that parents and teachers and the heads of schools statutorily declare that they are providing the correct information to avoid any uh, abuse. The speaker said parents of children who are below year one or not attending school can either apply through the online inflation mitigation application system or through manual forms available at legal aid offices throughout Fiji and the nearest schools. And the schools have also agreed, so if a child is three years old, they can, if they, there's no legal aid office, they can go to the nearest school and the schools will actually accept those forms. The category of these applicants, completed manual forms are to be submitted to the nearest school or legal aid office. Mr. Speaker, sir, at this stage only parents are permitted to submit the application as of now to avoid any abuse of the initiative. Mr. Speaker, sir, the, uh, for those in the Maritime Islands with no access to uh, M-Pesa or MyCash, they also have the option to receive the $180 assistance through their nearest post office agency when applying on the manual application form. We've, got, we've already signed an agreement with the Fiji Post, or in the process of signing agreement, sorry, where they will facilitate the payment for that, and they're charging us a lesser rate. All applications will close on 30 September 2022, and final payments will be paid out on 31 October 2022. Mr. Speaker, sir, as of today, a total of 20,571 applications have been received on the online inflation mitigation application system. Um, and uh, these applications are currently at the verification stage. A total of 100,476 applications have been received by schools as of 26 August 2022 through the hard copy manual application forms. Ministry of Economy has already assessed these applications and payment for this batch will be made this Thursday, 1st of September in two days' time. So, sir, uh, we will be paying, paying out this week and next week $38 million for 210,000 Fijian uh, students, tertiary students, social welfare recipients, pensioners and aftercare fund recipients. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, we have seen, in fact, uh, I was just sh sharing with the Honourable Prime Minister yesterday, a surge of parents now going to all the BDM offices. Because a lot of parents, in fact, you know, they're very, some of them are very late in registering their, uh, the birth certificate for the children. So they're all going ov over across, getting the birth certificates registered. And of course, that's free. Uh, we offer that for, for free in terms of extraction of birth certificates. And they're registering, obviously, to make the application, sir. Speaker, sir, just on that note, I'd also like to highlight, as we've said repeatedly uh, in, in, in Parliament, that a lot of, uh, all of these uh, instances of inflation and the important inflation, sir, is in fact out of our control. Uh, government can only control things as they land in Fiji, where we have price control measures. As announced by the FCCC today, sir, the price of fuel on the 1st of September, which is this Thursday, for motor spirits is dropping by 55 cents a litre. In other words, it's $3.67 at the moment. By, first, by the 1st of September, it'll go down to $3.12. Premix, currently $3.47. It'll go down to $2.93 from Thursday. Kerosene, it's currently, kerosene is currently $2.89. It'll go down to $2.45. Diesel, which is currently $3.61 a litre, will go down to $3.09. So all of them are dropping significantly. Motor spirit by 55 cents a litre, pre-mixed by 54 cents a litre, kerosene by 44 cents a litre, and diesel by 52 cents a litre. Gas, Mr. Speaker, sir, or LPG, the 4.5 kilogram cylinder, currently $16.63, it'll drop down to $16.13, a drop of 50 cents. 12 kg cylinder, currently $44.35, it'll drop down to $43.01, a drop of $1.34. Bulk um, gas sir, is $3.42, it'll go down to $3.32, a drop of $0.10. Auto gas, which is $2.28 currently, will go down to $2.21, which is $0.07. So as we can see, sir, this is all subject to international market conditions. Uh, there is currently, sir, um, we saw that the, uh, the 
barrel uh, of oil cost about one dollar U.S. cents. Sorry, one hundred and twenty dollars U.S. dollars just a few weeks ago. Today it's sitting at eighty-nine dollars a barrel. So in November, for example, so November, December traditionally is when the price of fuel goes up because there's winter in the northern hemisphere, in Europe, USA, Canada, etc. There's more demand for energy, so the price traditionally goes up. There is currently, uh, we, uh, we, we, if you read the markets, uh, the market news, uh, Iran is about to sign a deal which hopefully will get across the line with USA and Europe. Should that agreement get across the line, it means the Iranians have a lot of oil that they've got stocked up or piled up. If that agreement gets online, they will be able to push that uh, supply into the market. If they do that, then suddenly the market is flush with oil and we'll expect the prices to drop significantly. Of course, there's all these machinations behind the scenes. Some oil companies currently are making a handsome profit. Some countries are making a handsome profit. Don't want that to happen because they are making the amount of money they're making 24 hours the amount of money we actually have in our GDP uh, in annually. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, as we said, uh, it's all subject to market prices. Unfortunately, when I said this yesterday or today, when Honorable Prasad was talking about, you know, people should be allowed to think for themselves. And when I said that, we know that they're going around and saying that they will bring down the price of fuel, they'll bring down the price of cooking, oil, they'll bring down the price of flour. These politicians are actually going and doing that. They're hoodwinking members of the public. They cannot do that. This is a, a complete vindication of what we have been saying. Because as I said, I'd like to reiterate that point. If it was within our control, and because the elections are there, we would drop the price of everything so people can vote for us. But we cannot do that. And however, Mr. Speaker, sir, what we can do is provide for inflation mitigation. Yeah. Which is precisely what we are doing. And we will see all these uh, Fijians who are more vulnerable, and the children in particular who get vulnerable will be paying out $60 million in the next couple of weeks, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Honorable Attorney General.